Tesla came to us to speak, the world is not prepared. And secondly, we are undervalued. The electric vehicle revolution is accelerating faster and faster, and it's quite obvious that electric vehicles are our future. In fact, Tesla already sold out on its vehicles for the entire second quarter of 2021. In Tesla's Q1 earnings conference call, Elon explained how we've seen a real shift in customer perception of electric vehicles, and our demand is the best we've ever seen. We're used to seeing a reduction in demand in the first quarter, and we saw an increase in demand that exceeded the normal seasonal reduction in demand in Q1. Yet, while demand for EVs has certainly increased, there is one major issue, whether the supply can be fulfilled. More specifically, the problem centers around whether there will be enough nickel supply that can support the exponential growth in EVs. Elon has publicly spoken about this issue before, but it seems as if his concerns have died down for a reason that I'll explain. In this video, I will cover why I'm doubling down on one mining stock that I believe is extremely undervalued and may have just signed a massive multi-year nickel contract with Tesla. Welcome to Kazgain's Academy. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more content like this and let's get right into it. Now I'm not gonna hold you hostage to tell you the stock I'm doubling down on. The stock I'm talking about is Vale Mining, ticker symbol V-A-L-E. And if this company sounds familiar, it's because I talked about it in a previous video. Before you have preconceived notions about this stock, allow me to explain why I see Vale as a low risk high reward investment over the next few years. I first spoke about Vale Mining at the beginning of 2021, where I explained how I believe that Vale Mining was going to secure a Tesla partnership and benefit tremendously from the EV revolution. Over the past couple of months, this thesis has only gotten stronger and stronger after some groundbreaking news was announced. First of all, you might be wondering, what is Vale Mining? Vale Mining is one of the largest mining companies in the world, with operations primarily in Brazil, but also Canada and Indonesia. The company mines iron, nickel, manganese, copper, and coal. However, the only major materials that are mined in that list are iron, nickel, and copper. According to Vale's 20F filing, roughly 78.8% .8 of its total revenue in 2020 was from iron ore or iron ore pellets. After that, nickel and copper came in at 12.5% and 5.4% of Vale's total revenues respectively. In the short term, Vale's growth is coming from the rising commodity prices, especially with iron. Iron has been in a shortage and as a result, prices are skyrocketing in the short term. However, the long term potential lies in nickel and potentially copper, which is where Tesla and EVs come into play. First of all, let's start with why I believe Vale may have secured a secret partnership with Tesla recently. Back in October of 2020, multiple sources announced that Vale Mining was in talks to secure a nickel mining deal with Tesla. Mark Travers, who is Vale's executive director of Base Metals, told Reuters that Vale and Tesla were in talks for a nickel contract. He stated that the nature of the discussions I'm sure that is occurring across the industry right now, and without specifically commenting on Tesla, those are the conversations we are having right now. After that, when he was asked whether Vale and Tesla were in talks, Travers said, yes, absolutely. A few days later, Vale's CFO confirmed that Tesla came to Vale to discuss the possibility of securing a nickel contract. The automotive companies will need a lot of nickel and, um, and the world is not prepared to supply that much nickel. So Tesla came to us to speak because also this, most of Vale's nickel come from safe jurisdictions, jurisdictions that follow best practice in terms of, of ESGs. And uh, there's a road open for opportunities for mutual collaboration to try to develop those mines that the world will need. Already, the fact that Tesla came to Vale and not the other way around shows a hidden power pyramid. As the largest nickel mining company in the world, Vale has a leverage, not Tesla. Now that part may seem relatively speculative, but take a look at what happened recently. In Vale's most recent earnings report, Vale announced that they have plenty of buyers and they recently signed a quote unquote significant multi-year nickel mining contract with an OEM. Currently, just, just, by, just to give a little bit of an update, we have buyers who are very interest in, interested in the products that, we've, uh, that we produce right now in the electric vehicle space. We, current, we recently signed a, a significant multi-year contract with an OEM. Um, it will. It represents about five percent of our class one nickel, and we see further opportunities to grow these the sale of our our class one nickel into this space. Now, I do think that Tesla could have been behind this nickel contract, and this is simply because of how many clues point to this. 
The first clue is not a credible source, so take this with a grain of salt. But according to Vale's Wikipedia page, Tesla is known to purchase the majority of their nickel from Vale. Again, this shouldn't be taken seriously because the source is not reliable, but we do have to acknowledge that it exists. Additionally, in July of 2020, Elon Musk said himself that Tesla would be signing a long-term mining contract for nickel. Tesla will give you a con giant contract for a long period of time <laughs> if you m mine nickel efficiently and in, in an environmentally sensitive way. Top this off with the fact that Tesla was in talks with Vale a few months before Vale signed this quote unquote significant mining contract and there is a good case for this contract being with Tesla. But of course, that's not enough, which is why we're about to do some long calculations. Stay with me, because this is all going to lead to one final result. First of all, to start with, there aren't many automakers that need a lot of nickel right now. The EV competition has been lacking, especially in the US. By doing some quick calculations, we can see that Vale's contract being with Tesla is highly likely. Tesla uses an iron phosphate battery for its operations in China, which contains no nickel. So we can rule Tesla's China operations out of our calculations. Tesla currently sells roughly 22,000 vehicles per month in the US. And all of these vehicles use nickel in Tesla's flagship lithium nickel cobalt aluminum battery, also known as the NCA battery. According to Inside EVs, Tesla uses 30 kilograms of nickel per Model 3. If we add in the Model S, X, and eventually Cybertruck into this calculation, then the real number is likely near 35 to 40 kilograms of nickel per vehicle. To stay conservative, we're going to use 35 kilograms. Now let's assume that Tesla sells 25,000 vehicles per month for 12 months in the US. 25,000 vehicles times 12 months is equal to 300,000 vehicles per year. If we assume that Vale's multi-year contract is 3 years long, then we can do 300,000 times 3 and then multiply that by 1.2 to account for a potential production ramp up. In the end, this number is equal to 1,080 vehicles. After that, we can multiply 1,080 vehicles by 35 kilograms of nickel per vehicle, which is equal to 37,800,000 kilograms of nickel. To translate this to metric tons, we can divide this number by 1,000 to get 37,800 metric tons of nickel. If we assume that Tesla gets 60% of its nickel from Vale, then we get a final result of Tesla needing 22,680 metric tons of nickel from Vale. If we divide this number by 3, we get Tesla's annual nickel demand from Vale of 7,560 metric tons. Then, we can divide this number by Vale's total class 1 nickel supply of 124,000 metric tons. Then we get a final result of Tesla needing roughly 6% of Vale's annual nickel supply. In the electric vehicle space, we, current, we recently signed a, a significant multi-year contract with an OEM. Um, it will, it represents about 5% of our class one nickel. Of course, at the end of the day, we don't know if the contract was with Tesla, but given the clues, it seems likely. Either way, there's a huge investment opportunity with Vale and the EV space in general, and something even more profound recently occurred. Although Vale mining stock has gone up recently, the stock remains unreasonably undervalued. Vale currently trades at a trailing PDE of 11 and a forward PDE under 5. That is incredibly low, especially considering that Vale is only expected to become more profitable in the future. In fact, analysts are expecting Vale's earnings to grow 34% every year in the next 5 years. That is equivalent to a 4.3x in 5 years in Vale's earnings, which if Vale is valued at a PDE of 12 5 years later, would mean a 5x in the stock price. Additionally, Vale also has a dividend yield of 3.5%, which is quite high given Vale's low PDE ratio. Vale is clearly very undervalued, especially considering its future growth. And it's not just me saying that, Vale's executives also know this. Before Vale's Q1 earnings call, Vale announced that it was considering spinning off its EV based metal mining business. When asked about this, Vale CEO responded by saying that they were considering spinning off the business so that the full value of it would be recognized by the EV hype. Additionally, the CEO also mentioned that Vale was extremely undervalued and the base metal story was undervalued as well. Well, let me be clear here. It, uh, it, obviously, we are always analyzing oppor the, the, this uh, opportunities, okay? That's a main, the main, how can I say, it, driver behind us. What, what is really pushing us to that situation, I think is twofold. One is that we are in the midst of the foundation of recovering the business and we believe we are on the right track and secondly we are undervalued 
bothly on the valley as a whole and on, on base metal story. So it's a clear way to unlock value just in the basis of the multiples. So what we said, and, uh, and I would be clear now to, make, to give you our, where our minds are, it's in the, exactly the conceptual phase of analyzing what does that mean. That's right, the Vale CEO literally said that their business is undervalued. Of course, you might think that every CEO would say this, but there's an underlying reason as to why Vale CEO outright claims that Vale is undervalued. In this case, he used Vale's valuation to explain why he potentially wants to spin off Vale's base metal portion as a new company. So now that we know this, let's take a look at what this would look like, because such an event could lead Vale to almost 2x in value in such a short period of time. First of all, Vale's EV base metal operations would be spun off for a new business that is publicly traded. These base metals in particular are nickel and copper, which are commonly used in batteries. If this is valued at a price to sales ratio of 10, then this new company alone would be worth $71.7 .7 billion and instantly boost Vale stock by 50%. And I'm not kidding. To put this into context, MP Materials is another EV base metal mining company that has a price to sales ratio of 17. So it's not a far-fetched assumption, since Vale is already profitable by a substantial amount. Overall, Vale is definitely mispriced by the market. But with that being said, there are some reasons as to why that is, which is what I will address right now. Back in January 2019, Vale faced a major environmental disaster in its iron ore operations in Brazil. One of Vale's dams collapsed and led hundreds of people to be killed. And for that reason, I offer my condolences. A similar dam collapse occurred in 2015, and now Vale is finally doing something about it. The 2019 dam collapse led Vale to $7 billion in fines, and now Vale is on the path to finally save its image. Now do know that these collapses are all with Vale's iron operations, and Vale's nickel is mined in an environmentally friendly way. Either way, this wasn't good for Vale's reputation. However, Vale is doing everything it can to recover. First of all, Vale is looking to improve its dam management. Vale is reducing the number of dams that are at risk of collapse and will continue to do so in the next few years. In 2021 alone, Vale is looking to reduce the number of dams at risk by 10 and is also looking to use a hazard identification and risk management methodology with 37 dams by the end of 2021. Vale is also looking to increase its iron ore production in the next few years from 327 metric tons to 450 metric tons, which will increase revenue over the next few years. To top it off, Vale is actively improving its reputation, which was seen through a $2 billion investment plan towards reducing carbon emissions over the next decade. Additionally, Vale also sold off its new Caledonia nickel mine, which has not only been sparking protests due to environmental damage, but has also been extremely unprofitable for Vale. There are also some drawbacks to that though, as Tesla became an advisor with the mining company that Vale sold the mine to. But either way, it's a win for Vale. Overall, Vale is a stock that I believe has massive potential over the next few years. However, I'm not a financial advisor, so always do your own due diligence. With that being said, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.